Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer on this Saturday, September 19th, 2020. For our morning prayer liturgy, we're using the Office of the Hours from the Liturgy of the Hours and the Abridged Liturgy from there. So let us begin. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our first reading is from the book of 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, that he had put all the prophets to the sword. Jezebel then sent a messenger to Elijah and said, May the gods do thus, and so to me, if by this time tomorrow I have not done with your life what was done to each of them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life, going to Beersheba of Judah. He left his servant there and went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death. This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a heart cake, a hearth cake, and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. There he came to a cave, where he took shelter. Then the Lord said, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah had his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous before the Lord, the God of hosts, but the Israelites have forsaken your government torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus, the Lord said to him. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shephah, of Abba as prophet to succeed you. If anyone escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill him. If he escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill him. Yet I will leave 7,000 men in Israel. All those who have not knelt to Baal are kissed him. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shephah, as he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He was following the 12th. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Go back, Elijah answered. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them, used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh, and gave it to his people to eat. Then he left and followed Elijah as his attendant. And our second reading is from the treatise on the mysteries by St. Ambrose. The apostle, the apostle teaches you that our fathers were all covered by the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Further, Moses in his canticle says, You sent your spirit, and the sea overwhelmed them. You observe that in the crossing, that the Hebrews, there was already a symbol of holy baptism. The Egyptian perished. The Hebrew escaped. 
What else is the daily lesson of the sacrament than the guilt is drowned and error destroyed, while goodness and innocence pass over unharmed? You are taught that our fathers were covered by the cloud, a cloud of blessings that cooled the fire of bodily passions, a cloud of blessing. It is with a cloud of blessing that the Holy Spirit overshadows those whom he comes to visit. The Holy Spirit came at the last upon the Virgin Mary, and the power of the Most High overshadowed her when she conceived for all humankind him who is redemption. This great miracle was prefigured through Moses. If then the Spirit was prefigured, is he not now present in truth? For Scripture tells you that the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Mara was a spring of bitter water. When Moses threw wood into it, it became sweet. Water, you see, is of no avail for future salvation without the proclamation of the Lord's cross. But when it has been consecrated through the saving mystery of the cross, it is then ready for use in the laver of the Spirit and in the cup of salvation. Therefore, as Moses in his role of prophets threw wood into the spring of Marah, so also the priest sends out into the fountain of baptism the proclamation of the Lord's cross, and the water becomes sweet, ready for the giving of grace. Do not then believe only what the eyes of your body tell you. What is not seen is here more truly seen, for what is seen belongs to time, but what is not seen belongs to eternity. What is not comprehended by the eyes, but is seen by the mind and the soul, is seen in a truer and deeper sense. Finally, learn from the readings we have gone through from the books of the kings. Naaman was a Syrian, he was a leper, and could not be healed by anyone. Then a girl from among the captives said that there was a prophet in Israel who could cleanse him from the disease of leprosy. Taking gold and silver, we are told, he went to see the king of Israel. The king, on learning the reason for his coming, rent his garments, saying that it is re- was really to find an excuse against him, for what he was being asked was beyond the power of a king. Elisha, however, told the king to send the Syrian to him and he would learn that there was a god in Israel. When he came, Elisha ordered him to bathe seven times in the river Jordan. Then Naaman began to reflect that the rivers of his own country had better waters, and that he had often bathed in them, and never been cleansed of his leprosy. This gave him pause, and refused to obey the prophet's instructions. But on the advice and persuasion of his servants, he yielded and bathed and was instantly made clean. He realized then that it was not in the waters that made him clean, but by grace. Here was a man who doubted before being made whole. You are already made whole, and so ought not to have any doubt. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our Father, your light of truth guides us to the way of Christ. May all who follow him reject what is contrary to the gospel. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Remember us, Lord, when you come to your kingdom and teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We wish you all a blessed day and look forward to seeing you in the evening for evening prayer. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.